I recently took part in a soapbox derby race for artists, sponsored by the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. First, I'll show some footage of the race so you can get a sense of what a wonderful event it was. But the main part of this video shows the precise metalworking required to make the rear wheel. The last time the museum had this race was in 1978. I was an art student then, and that's when I first constructed my low-slung stainless steel three-wheeler. I'm so glad I kept the car for all these years, and I was able to revamp it for this year's event. If you've watched my YouTube videos, you may recall the collaboration I did with the 6061 channel to make what we called the F-bomb. In a moment of inspiration, I decided to make this part of the package. I didn't want my vehicle to be a weapons carrier, so I renamed it the Hyperdrive Unit and put a flickering light in the back. It was a crowd favorite. I consider the race to be a huge success, and I won a trophy for the most outrageous car. A lot can happen in 44 years, and I'll show you one example. Here's the rear wheel from the 1978 version. As you can see, the old wooden rim is warped badly, so I'm going to make a new rim from steel to replace it. My plan for making the new rim was to bend channels from 16 gauge steel, then curve and join them. I'm using a bending brake here to make channels 48 inches long, and the rim will be comprised of four segments. I've set a stop on my brake, so all the bends will be identical. So here's the first channel. I'll bend three more, plus some extras, just in case. To curve this channel into a hoop, I'm going to bend it around a wooden disc. And I need to know what size to make the disc because the metal will spring back. So this is a disc I just happen to have. It's 20 and a half inches in diameter. I'm going to bend this channel around this disc and see how much it springs back. So I'll bend it one half at a time. And then I'll measure the result. So the wooden disc is 20 and a half inches in diameter, and the part I bent over it is 22 inches in diameter. So I'll calculate the percentage of spring back. That will tell me how large to make the disc for the wheel. I did the math and found that the spring back was about 7.3%. My goal is to make a rim with an inside diameter of 55 inches. So my form is 51 and a quarter inches. Since my channels are only four feet long, this form doesn't need to be a full circle. I made another form with a 55 inch diameter to fit the curved channels against for the final assembly. I made both these pictures by rotating the blanks around a pin while holding the edge against a disc sander. This ensured that I have a uniform radius. I cut holes in this picture to reduce the weight to make it easier to handle. Now I can bend each one of the channels around the form. That makes it pretty simple. I'm going to fit these pieces together now. I've drawn marks on my form that are 90 degrees apart. So we're going to have one joint every 90 degrees. So I'll mark the ends of this piece and trim it. And I'll mark a second piece at this time. So I'll trim these two pieces and weld them together before I fit the last two pieces. I'm ready to join the first two pieces together. I'm relying on the roundness of my form and the flatness of my table to align these precisely. So it's touching the table with no gap, and it's touching the form with no gap. So I know these are in proper alignment. So the last step is to use a vice grip clamp to pull the edges together. Make sure I have good alignment that way. And now I can put a tack weld right on this joint. I 
I'll move the clamp and put another tack closer to the edge. And now I'll put one more tack right on the edge. And I'll flip this upside down and tack the other side. I'll finish well this joint off the form, smooth it, and then I'll add the next piece. When this cools, I'll smooth it by sanding. I'll hit this with 60 grit first. Then I'll go to 120 grit. and finish with 240. So that leaves a very fine finish. Nice. So with the first two segments joined together, I'll start working on the second two. I'll get this piece centered between these two marks, so I'll be cutting the same amount off of each end. And then I'll mark where it needs to be trimmed. I'll mark the last piece at this time too, but I'm just going to mark one end. I'll leave one end long so I can do the final trimming after the first three pieces are put together. Now it's time to fit the last end of the last piece. So I have the whole ring clamped tightly against the form and I'll snug this end up tight and then mark this end for trimming. And I'm going to trim this just a little bit long and then carefully sand it until I get a perfect fit on both ends. With a little careful sanding, I've got this to fit perfectly. So I'll get this clamped up and tack welded, then I'll take it off the ring to finish welded. Now I can grind all these joints smooth and the fabrication will be finished. The wheel has 72 spokes and they have to be placed accurately. So I'm going to do a layout on the form. I have a beam compass here and I'll use this to make a mark a short distance from the edge all the way around the perimeter. Now I can easily turn this circle into six by using the same setting on the beam compass. I'll make a mark here and here. 
I'll do the same on the other end. So these marks divide the circle accurately into sixths. And then I'm going to use a set of dividers to break each of these six up into 12 equal parts. And I've already set this to the right dimension. So I'll just start marking off these dimensions. So you can see that came out just perfectly. So I'll do this division of 12 into each of the divisions of 6, and that will very accurately show us where all 72 spoke holes need to go in the rim. Now I need to transfer each of these points out to the edge of the form. I'll use a straight edge to do that, and I put a pin in the center of my form to guide this straight edge. So I'll put the straight edge right up against that pin, and then I'll align it with the mark and transfer that right out to the edge. And I'll do that for each of these locations. So now I can put the rim back on the form and start transferring these marks from the form to the rim. I'm going to drill a pilot hole for each one of the spokes now. So I'll use a square to move the mark over to the center of the rim. And before I even bent this rim up, I scribed a center line. So that's where the spoke will go. And then I'll use an automatic center punch to mark where the hole will go. and I'll drill the pilot hole. So I'll continue this process until all the holes are drilled. Now I can open each hole up to the finished size. Now we'll use a single flute countersink to deburr all these holes. That does a nice job. The rim is cleaned and prepped. I'm going to spray some paint on it now. It's time to put the spokes in the wheel now, and I've never done this before, so I had to invent my own system. So I marked six equally spaced points on the rim, and I put a piece of tape by the nearest hole, and I've also marked six equally spaced points on the hub, and again, I've marked those locations with tape. So I'm going to put the first spoke through one of the marked holes. I'll drop that down, and then I'll feed the end of the spoke into the hole with the tape on it. And I've used spacers to hold the rim at a height that matches the center point of the hub. So I did a dry run on this and I found how far I have to run the nipples up to get everything centered. And basically I'll bring the nipple up until there's an eighth inch of thread exposed. So right about there should be good for the first spoke. Now we'll go to the next spoke. And again, I'll feed the spoke in through the hole that's marked and start the nipple on the threads of the spoke and thread it in until there's an eighth inch of thread exposed. Then I'll go to the next location and do the same thing. I'll put the spoke through the hole in the rim Start the nipple on the threads. Okay, so three spokes are done. Now I can put the in-between spoke into place. 
and get it set. And I'll have to rotate this now to get the one in the front. So I'll lift this up and spin it around. I need to have an open space here to drop the spoke down through. Okay, so with six spokes in place, I should be able to remove these spacers and that will enable me to get the rest of the spokes positioned. So I have all the spokes in place on this side of the wheel. Now I'll put six spokes in from the other side. So these need to be slipped up through the holes on the bottom. And I've marked the location of six equally spaced holes. We'll get the nipple into place. And then there's five more to go. So with six spokes in place on this side, the wheel has enough stability now that I can take it off the fixture and reverse it. And the advantage is, is that gravity will pull the spokes into place. So I'll loosen the nut on the hub, pull this off, flip it around, and reinstall it on my fixture. And now I can fit the rest of the spokes into place. The first step was simply to assemble the hub and the rim with the spokes. Now that that's done, I built a stand to help true the wheel. So by truing, I want to have the rim centered on the hub, and I want to eliminate any run out up and down and right to left. And I'm a beginner at this, so I've gotten it reasonably close, but I'm going to send it out to Jules at Watsonville Cyclery, and he'll dial it into perfection. The last step is mounting the tire to the rim. I'm using heavy wall rubber tubing here, designed for the old penny farthing bicycles. This material comes in bulk length like a garden hose, and is held to the rim by a taut wire. I'll put a link in the description that shows this process. So a complicated shape like this wheel rim can be made by following a series of simple steps. The wheel worked great, and I hope there'll be more races in the future. If you'd like to learn more about the previous Artist Soapbox Derbies, leave a comment, and I may make a video that covers that in the future. I helped build this car for my mentor, Don Potts, for the first race in 1975. It's a fascinating story. I love making these videos, and I'm honored that you're watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified about new videos. I read every comment, and I do my best to answer all questions. If you like what I'm doing, please click the Patreon link and become one of the great people who help me create new videos.